uh, but you have spent uh, the last four weeks away from your families, as mentioned by Sophie, and I'm sure you are looking forward to going home. But I just want to uh, start off by congratulating uh, the Fiji Women's Crisis Center, uh, Shamima Ali, for a successful uh, regional uh, event uh, that culminates in your graduation today. I, um, I just want to say um, all protocols observed that it is certainly an honor and privilege to be here tonight. And I'm, I'm very grateful to Shamima for allowing me to be here. Uh, and I uh, heard from some participants as I was walking through the room that Shamima has been talking for the whole four weeks. And uh, I'm here, I'm glad I'm here to relieve her of some of those duties so that I can share some thoughts as well. But they did mention um, how much knowledge and how much experience Shamima has. And that uh, they hear it from others, but they are very grateful for being here and being able to hear from Shamima and the Fiji Women's Crisis Center and to be celebrating their birthday and to acknowledge an amazing, powerful feminist and leader that has led the way for the last 40 years um, I myself have learned so much from her, and I, and I know that uh, she will continue to inspire, and as she said, she'll work herself out of business. Uh, Shamima, please don't go yet. I still need you, uh, and you know why. But uh, it's just really recognizing the partnerships, the partnerships that uh, we have between government and non-governmental organizations, our development partners, our civil society organizations that can make any vision or any mission possible. The government cannot do it alone, and so I stand here to acknowledge the great work of the women's movement in Fiji. I acknowledge Nima, Reverend Sere Malamalamo is here, Fiji Women's Rights Movement, uh, Diva for Equality. Uh, you've heard Sophie mention about the National Action Plan to Prevent Gender-Based Violence. Um, that was not possible without the partnership with our civil society organizations, our women's movement here in Fiji and the Pacific as well. So I want to acknowledge you for that. I, um, I was privileged to have been part of the recent uh, regional convening of the Triennial Conference, the 15th Triennial Conference of Pacific Women. And uh, this was held in the Marshall Islands in July. It was my first triennial conference and my first time to Marshall Islands as well. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, we acknowledge the partnership of our CSO partners and crop agencies uh, in supporting and implementing uh, the, the commitments by our leaders in the region. Uh, they go on from the triennial to present at our Pacific Leaders Meeting this coming week. So I urge you and I exhort you as leaders, women leaders in the Pacific, when you go back to your countries to hold your leaders accountable to the commitments and especially the revitalized gender equality declaration. We were able to, uh, at that uh, triennial conference, also include the language as well as the need to raise the visibility of technology facilitated gender-based violence, which is really the crime of the 21st century. As we increase connectivity in our countries, we are, yes, small island states with less population, but we are big ocean states. And we have the ability to be able to stand up as a region to make a call to our leaders and to those that we need to hold accountable when it comes to protecting our women and children uh, on, on, online and their activities online as well as crimes that are committed online. Now, during this convening, as I mentioned, uh, we also were able to uh, recommend the possibility of having a robust regional knowledge hub on key areas such as prevention of gender-based violence, women's economic empowerment, sexual and reproductive health and rights, and of course, gender-responsive plan planning and budgeting. This hub would document and disseminate what works in critical areas in our Blue Pacific based on lessons learned from across the region, it can be very useful for us to establish this knowledge hub, particularly as women leaders, as we equip ourselves with evidence-based informed actions 
to advocate and support the effective implementation of the Gender Equality Pledge across all regional initiatives. Of course, I want to acknowledge our gentlemen in the room, our male champs, gender equality, you we'll always need that. But I, I thank them for their support in our work uh, here in Fiji and across the region. And I, um, I know it, uh, it um, as even as we were at the regional conference at the Triangle, we had one uh, national leader, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu present, who is also the Minister for Women. And he listened and uh, he participated very intensely and is committed to represent us uh, at the Pacific Leaders Meeting. But it's critical. It's uh, the critical training and learning platforms like this. Enhancing our skills and knowledge of service providers is an important step to preventing and responding to violence against women and girls in your diverse communities. You heard from Shimima, yes, the statistic has not changed in our region, but we hope for transformative change. The statistic will only move if there is transformative change, if there is a paradigm shift in the way we do things, and engaging our boys and men in order to deal with gender-based violence, and violence against women and girls. This is very important. Um, I also shared at the regional convening the National Action Plan to prevent violence against women and girls, which is developed in collaboration with our CSOs, our women's movement here in Fiji, including Fiji Women's Rights Movement, I'm sorry, Fiji Women's Crisis Center, um, the civil society and faith-based organizations, and I acknowledge general, the generous support of the government of Australia, as well as partnership with UN Women. An update was also provided to the convening on efforts in pivotal sectors such as education, sports, media, traditional and faith settings. In the media setting, I highlighted our primary focus on two major areas. I've mentioned one, the prevention of technology facilitated gender-based violence or online violence, including the need to review laws and the establishment of protection and combating mechanisms along with launching a national communication campaign across the key settings to challenge and shift discriminatory social norms and to fight patriarchy. As Shamim has mentioned, is actually stated in our national action plan and endorsed by government that we finally recognize patriarchy as a root cause for gender-based violence and gender inequality. I'm happy to note that these critical topics were one of the many great topics also covered in this four weeks training program. Gender-based violence, as we know, continues to be a grave issue. Of course, it's concerning that women are underrepresented in leadership. Um, I am one of five women in parliament in Fiji, and that has reduced from 11 women in the last sitting of parliament. So what has happened? Why is there a reduction in women in leadership? Of course, I, uh, I congratulate, I believe, our members from Kiribati. I congratulate Kiribati in their recent elections. Can we just put our hands together? But they now have five women MPs in their parliament. I was honored to attend their women mock parliament in 2019, where there were zero women in parliament. And uh, there were community leaders, women community leaders, that attended that mock parliament. Uh, they ran one again uh, late last year. It was attended by Honorable Pramila Kumar. And so they have achieved five women in parliament. So what an achievement for them. Of course, we know we are also battling high rates of reproductive cancers. This is an ongoing issue, which is related to sexual and reproductive health and rights, HIV, AIDS, and teenage pregnancies. These are issues that we face in all our countries. All these challenges, as we know, are happening on the backdrop of a climate crisis which affects our daily lives. When we know these issues, I take this opportunity to thank each of you participants. Thank you for your individual efforts as well as those of the organizations that you represent. 
in tirelessly championing women's rights, advocating for structural changes, and continuing on to promote inclusive, women-centered approaches in your diverse communities amidst, um, amidst the challenging times that we live in. Of course, we understand that the address to issue violence against women is not an easy task. And we realize this as Fiji is implementing our National Action Plan as well. There are challenges, there are bumps along the way, but like Shimima said, we continue to forge on. And I hope that as you leave here from Fiji, as you return to your homes, that you have a renewed sense of hope and fight to carry on. Um, I also learned from your participants uh, as I uh, came in here today that many of you are survivors, are survivors and you are here uh, fighting on. I'd like to say you are not just survivors, you are thrivers. And our women and girls are looking up to you to be their voice and to fight on. And as we know the statistics, you just have to look to your left and right to know that two out of the three women that you see is facing intimate partner violence in their lifetimes. And so, as, as women leaders, I, I encourage you to implement the strategies and action plans that you have developed from this training. You have the opportunity to continue this engagement via the formation of a peer support network, if not formed already, to continue to connect virtually or in person to provide each other that much needed support. To continue, as we know, all working in this space, it is not an easy journey. So continue to support each other and lift each other up. We are Women MPs at a meeting also in uh, Auckland earlier this year as Women MPs. And we had the five women from Bougainville attending for the first time <coughs> since they formed government. Why, well, they were on fire. It was so wonderful to hear from them, but more so I was awed by how they were able to overcome being first-hand witnesses to the genocide that happened in Rwanda. My apologies, in Bougainville, to be able to come through it. Each of them had an uncle or a father or a child or family member that was killed. But to be able to overcome that and to be able to speak up with such a strong voice at that platform, and from them came also the idea, let's form a regional uh, uh, group to meet virtually and to chat virtually, and so it was formed from that meeting. So I know how important it is when I read through and I see the successes as well as the challenges met by these women around the region. We all face that as well. You all face that as well. So please share, please connect, and don't feel like you are on your own. To Shamima and your team of facilitators, can you just put our hands together for that team? I think this is the longest regional or longest workshop I've been to. And only women can do that, right? Can have that stamina. I mean, Shamima, to have that stamina, that is amazing. You are so committed. And I know it comes from your heart. So I want to congratulate you and thank you for your commitment to empowering our participants, young and old, whatever background and diversity you come from. This is truly commendable. Throughout these four weeks, you've not only imparted valuable information, but ignited a spark in each participant. A spark. A spark that will continue to burn brightly beyond these walls, beyond Fiji's borders. Your dedication to fostering regional alliances, challenging norms, and advocating for change is truly inspiring. I believe it's become a beacon of hope for all our women in the region to come together. With that note, I shall conclude by congratulating all of you here tonight, each participant, each woman. I congratulate you and appreciate the different roles you play to ensure that our women and girls in the Pacific are protected, that their welfare is paramount, that we will be there to be their voice, 
as you return home. Thank you also for seeing through a successful completion of this regional training program on gender violence against women and girls in Human Rights 2024. I wish you a safe journey back home to your respective countries. And it's not goodbye, it's sotatale, and we will see you again. Napagalevu, Daniel.